those of you that have done this before, you know what to do. But if you can find the chat box and if you can let us know where you are calling in from, let us know what number event this is for you. And then also we'd love to know, have you ever flown a drone before? So put all that down in the chat box. This will just be a great way for us to get to know you before we start the presentation. So my name is Laura. I am one of the San Diego chapter leaders and one of the TNN virtual event hosts. I have been to so many events I've kind of lost track and I have not flown a drone. My 14 year old son has, but I don't think that counts because it was more of a toy back in the day. So, um, but I'm super excited to hear more and learn how to fly these drones. So before we get started, I am going to share my screen and let you all know about what the Nomadic Network is. So for those of you that are new, the Nomadic Network is a global community of like-minded travel enthusiasts who have come together to learn and inspire each other to travel better, cheaper, and longer. So as you know, we launched at the end of 2019. We had hopes of having in-person meetups all around the world. We had a couple of those, but because of the pandemic, we pivoted into these virtual events, which has been wonderful because we now offer um, just a variety of events for all of you. So we have the first type are these travel presentation style events, such as the one today where we bring a speaker in to share with us about a particular subject matter. And then we have regional events where those happen all over the world on a monthly basis. And that's more for you to connect with those in your own communities. And hopefully uh, in the next couple of months, we can start them back up in person, but for now they're virtual. And then we also have monthly book clubs where we invite a speaker or an author to come to speak to us about his or her book on a particular, uh, on what they wrote about. And it's just a great way to have an intimate and personal conversation with the author. So I'll share a little bit more about all of that at the end of the call, um, but that gives you a quick update. And then some things to keep in mind. So I see a lot of you that have your video on, awesome. If you, the rest of you want to, feel free to. It's always fun to see your smiling faces. Um, I will keep everyone muted though, just so we can hear Christine, but use that chat box. I know everyone's really good at that. And this is where you can share your experiences, any tips, and this is where you'll ask your questions. So if you can just write the word question first, that way we can keep track and I'll make sure we get them answered for you at the end of the chat. Uh, Christine is here doing this out of the kindness of her heart. So thank you in advance, yay, for being here and sharing all of your um, insight and wisdom around flying drones. And just know we are here to learn, satiate your wanderlust, and most importantly, have fun. I know this is gonna be a really fun session. And then for those of you who are not familiar, we have a membership program, which is called the Nomadic Map Plus. And you can go to that link right there. All of our events are recorded and you can get all the replays if you join this community program. So feel free to click on that link. And again, at the end of the call, share some more information about that. And then hopefully everyone is already following us on Instagram, but if not, you can head on over to at the.nomadic.network.com and that way, not .com, um, at dot that the Nomadic Network, and that way you can um, get all the info on what we have coming up for events and um, just follow us. And for now, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And now the reason you are all here today is to welcome our lovely speaker, Christine. So Christine actually did not start flying drones until January of 2020. And from that, she has become completely passionate about it. She has flown every day since, which is absolutely amazing to me. She is the travel creator behind her YouTube channel, Where in the World is CL? Um, basically, you know, she started flying the drone so she could capture new perspectives and she was hooked on it. And then she became a certified drone pilot and now is so passionate about encouraging others to fly. I'm sure if anyone of you follow her, you know um, her images are just outstanding. And um, she definitely is encouraging for those of us who want to learn. So she's recently launched a new YouTube channel, which is called Create with CL. And this is a way to help newbies get started and current pilots to up their game. So with that, I am so excited to introduce Christine. She is a ball of fire and I can't wait to have you here sharing with all of us. So welcome, I'll let you take- oh, Thank you. I am so, so excited about today. 
And you know what? I don't want to call this a presentation. It's actually going to be really, really interactive. Because for those of you who know a little bit about me, not only am I insanely fired up about drones, and I could talk about them all day, but there are a lot of different things I could talk about. And so this presentation today is catered to whether you, and I'm watching y'all in the chat, have never flown a drone before, or maybe have one just started. And I'm going to be sharing with you kind of what you can do with drones, as well as how you can get into it. Because one of the things for me is I think drones, dr flying drones is really easy and it's really, really, really fun. And it's important for me to help others get into it without getting really you know, tech savvy and geeking out on all the crazy things you can do with drones. So I will actually have the gallery up and I will be watching your reactions to this. So I can be gauging understanding, but please use the chat as well. And I'm super, super excited to be talking about drones today. Thank you for that intro. Um, in today's flight, can everyone see my screen? Give me a little thumbs up. Yep. All right. In today's flight, and we have San Francisco where I used to live in the background here. I'm a California girl, BTW. Um, I am a strong believer that not just travel creators, but every traveler, every traveler needs a drone. And I'm going to talk to you about why. I'm also going to talk to you about what it can do with you, do for you, whether you're a traveler or a travel creator. And one of the things that kind of hurts my heart is that so many people are afraid of drones. The word drone is associated with a lot of not so happy things and thoughts that people have in their head. And a lot of people think that they are scary, that they are complicated, that you will crash, that you will a lot of different things, do something illegal. And there are and I'm going to give you a little teaser alert. There are settings that you can put in your drone, just like parental settings on a TV, to make your drone not do those things. And a lot of people don't know that. And so I want to come here today to share some of those things. I'm going to talk to you about how to get started. If you don't have a drone and you're like, how much does it even cost? Like, is this is it hard to get into? I will talk to you about that. And I have created a lot a lot of free resources. So I will be talking to you about that as well. Uh, there are rules to this party. And some of the rules are please ask questions. We will save time at the end to talk about those, but I'm watching the chat right now and I'm gonna do my best to keep up with it as it makes sense. And I will be asking you guys questions um, and looking for head nods and things like that. So get ready to nod your head and also chill, chillax. This is fun. Drones are so fun. So. Get ready to have some fun and please connect with me. Um, Laura already gave me an amazing intro. Thank you for that. And I just wanted to put this on here to share that I am a believer. Drones are not hard, they're not scary, and they're not complicated. Um, and some of the things, and this is a preview to what I offer, but I am building at least one to two YouTube videos every week. Actually, in my latest YouTube video, I took one of your videos from Instagram that someone tagged me on. And I went and I showed you how to make it better for Instagram because the problem with drones is it's all horizontal video. How the heck are you gonna put it on Instagram or TikTok where it's vertical? I got you. And I did it just using my iPhone because it's not complicated. But basically I have tons of YouTube tutorials. I have a Facebook group where you can ask questions. Um, I have a full Instagram guide with 27 helpful posts. And actually, I will say if there's one thing you want to do, it's probably sign up for my email newsletter um, and I will share with you how. But I am actually buying another drone. I'm buying my fourth drone. I have three right now. But this one, I realized I, I'm going to sell this one because I'm getting a new one. And I was like, why sell it when I could give it to someone who could fly as badass as I am? And why just give it to them when I could fly to you wherever you are in the world and teach you hands on how to fly exactly like me. So that is something you will hear about as well. And that's happening now. So this is the landing page, christinelazada.com slash TNN. All that stuff I talked about, you'll find it on that page. Um, this will be shown again at the end. So don't sweat it. Don't worry. We're going to chillax. We're going to have a good time. Okay. Every traveler needs a drone. Anyone recognize where this picture is? This is Tulum Beach, where I'm flying tomorrow. I was so excited about today's presentation. I could have flown to Tulum yesterday, but I decided to fly tomorrow so I could be here on perfect Wi-Fi for you guys. Um, why do you guys travel? Why do we travel? 
And tell me, tell me in the chat why you guys travel. I would love to know. Um, but one of the reasons why I travel is really around discovery is around discovery. It's finding something new. It's being immersed in somewhere different. I love that brought in my mind. And for me, I love to travel and explore the land and explore the sea. I'm an avid scuba diver. I love to explore the sea. And now with the drone, ooh, adventure, nice Katie. Now I can explore from the sky and I can have these three perspectives from land to sea to sky. And I wanna give you, I have a goose, I have goosebumps just talking about that. I wanna show you an example of something that I would never have discovered if it wasn't for my drone. So this is a very underwhelming picture of me sitting on the concrete. I'm in Queens, I'm in Corona Park in New York. And I'm using this example because New York is one of the most difficult places in the United States to fly a drone. There are lots of drone laws there that make it insanely difficult. Corona Park is near LaGuardia Airport. It's near the Met Stadium. There are nuances of when you can and cannot fly and how high, and you get where I'm going in terms of it's complicated. But can you guess what I'm doing right there? I'm flying my drone because there is a way to do it. And one of the things you would never have known, I mean, there's nothing going on in this picture, but directly above me, exactly 195 feet, you can see, this is not edited. This is, there's no filter on this, nothing. This is straight from the drone. This is a picture of the Manhattan skyline with the sun setting in the background. That's what I couldn't have seen otherwise. This is a really underwhelming picture of me in Brooklyn sitting in the shade. It was 103 degrees this day and I'm sitting on the concrete and behind me, you can kind of see there's like this junkyard. That's not very exciting, but what you would never have known without a drone is that 200 feet in front of me. And it's this image on the top left of my Instagram feed. There's a boat graveyard. That's so cool. There's the boat graveyard right in Brooklyn. And now as a traveler, I'm being led to now like, look up on Google, like, what's this boat graveyard? Like, what's the info behind? How long has it been there? Why is it there? You can understand where I'm going as a traveler. I'm discovering things I would not have otherwise have known that were there. Amy's in the house. Does anyone recognize what's in this picture? It's like one or two sharks, right? Maybe one shark. This is like 500 sharks. I am sitting on the beach, maybe 50 feet away. I am not very far away from this picture. The great black tip shark migration was happening in Florida. I went out every day with my drone looking for them. And guess what? I found them. And this is something I would not have been able to see without my drone. Really, really cool. And right now I'm talking about how I've captured these things, obviously, so I can show you. But at the same time, it's like, I can't tell you how many times I've flown my drone and not even taken a photo or a video. Like as a traveler, I love just discovering. But the other thing is a traveler, and I'm a solo traveler mostly. Tell me in the chat if you're a solo traveler too. Uh, I like to take my own selfies, and it's a very empowering feeling to take all of my own photos. Yes, we got solo travelers in the house. What about group photos? Everybody squeeze in. No, you don't have to squeeze any squeeze in anymore. You just send your drone. And one of the questions from the Nomadic Network Instagram was like, how do you keep the drone steady for photos? One of the amazing things about a drone is that it will, unless it's really, really, really windy outside. And when I say really windy, I'm talking about 25 mile per hour winds. That's like Medusa hair kind of windy. The drone steadies itself and it hovers on its own. There's nothing you have to do. If I were to fly this thing right now and put the controller down, it will just stay like this right next to me. And it will hover and it will stay still. And one of the amazing things, and I'll talk about types of drones in a minute, but one of the things about DJI, if you didn't know this, DJI is not a drone company. They are a gimbal company. If you don't know what a gimbal is, tell me in the chat if you do. It's this little thing right here that's making the camera steady. It makes steady shots. And they basically just created a flying gimbal. Amy knows what I'm talking about. And so this gimbal stays very, very steady. So this right here, all I did was I stuck it in photo mode and took a picture every two seconds. We all pose. You can see me kind of hiding my drone controller behind my back. And we got the group shot. This is in Zanzibar, another very difficult place, drone rule wise. And I share these examples because it's likely where you are trying to fly is easier than that. But let's jump to both being a traveler and now moving into being a travel creator, because ultimately, like, what are we trying to do as travelers and travel creators who share our photos and videos? 
we want to tell a story, right? We want to share like what happened to us on our travels. We want to talk about what happened. We want people to see it. We want people to press like on Instagram and look at our TikToks, right? But at the same time, like why tell a story when you can tell a really badass story? And so the way I see drones is in addition to, it's a really great way to tell the rest of your story, more to your story, to give context. Because instead of taking the picture that's just right here, now you can take the picture that's from way back here. And so this is a picture of me hiking in Diamond Head in Oahu a couple months ago. It's a great picture. It's a really fun one. It's a selfie. You get the gist of Christine is on a really great hike this day. Where is Christine hiking at? That's where Christine is hiking at. And so this is another example of just really quick. This is a state park. You cannot fly a drone inside Diamond Head. Kind of in the same way when you're at the zoo, if you want to see the lion, you're not going to go snuggle up into its cage with it, are you? No, you're going to stand behind the bars and you're going to look at the lion, right? Same thing. I have stepped away from the part where you are not allowed to fly and gotten the picture that allows me to tell the story. And now someone can understand the hike from my perspective and the hike of where I'm at. It's helping me to tell that story. Actually, Alita did a really great job in some of her recent reels telling her story about uh, being on some beautiful underwater, overwater bungalows. Um, going back to Zanzibar and Carla, they are semi drone friendly. They are one of the first places in Africa actually to create specific drone rules. So you can register your drone there in the same way you register your drone in the US to be able to fly. I like this one because it's like, hey, this is me sitting on the beach. And as a matter of fact, this is the beach that I'm on, right? Think about all those selfies we take where it's like just your face in another place. And it's like, well, but where were you? And it's like, oh, wow, you were on this crazy sandbar. That's pretty cool, right? And so those are two pictures uh, from my drone. I went on a hike. There were a lot of steps. That's a cool story. And this picture on the right of me kayaking in Oahu, it's about, and Laura, you're exactly right. It's about perspectives, right? Think about the last time you spent six hours scrolling through Instagram. Uh, it's the same thing over and over and over and over and over, right? And to tell a badass story, you wanna show a perspective that people aren't used to seeing all the time. And one of the things that I love about drones is you can get that unique perspective of me in the kayak. That's really hard to get when even, you know, you got your GoPro stick, that's cool, but this adds to the story. So I think you understand where I'm going with that. Let's talk about travel creators who might wanna make a little bit of money from their drone, right? Because maybe you might be interested in that as well. So I wanna give you a couple examples. And one is, this is a, a resort I recently stayed at in Playa del Carmen, I love it. And this was a picture of my room. That's a really cool picture. Going back just like before, well, where was your room? Oh, it was right there on that resort, right? Beautiful shot of the entire resort. Imagine, imagine your resume, right? Your resume says, you know, I can fill in the blank, take photography, use a DSLR. Now adding to that, I have a drone. In this world of working with hotels, working with tourism boards, working with tour operators, that is a really great additional piece in your arsenal. And let's talk about slipping into the DMs. An example would be, hey, I really want to work with so-and-so hotel. Tell me if anyone in the, in the chat tries to do these types of things where you try to slip into people's DMs, you're trying to work with them. One of my favorite ways is getting their intention with a photo like this. Hey, I, I'm coming back to your resort. I really enjoyed this day. I would love to partner together. Bam, drone shot in the DMs. And they're like, okay, you got my attention. I recently did this. Here's a great example. Brand new hotels in the Florida area. Sometimes I'm in South Florida. I just happened to be in the area droning sharks. So I would stop by that hotel, which I'm super interested in, took a quick drone shot, slipped into their DMs and was like, hey, I'm so excited about the opening of your place and drone shot. They don't have drone shots yet because they're still opening. They probably want to work. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Ah, get really fired up. Drones are not hard. Drones are not hard. I'll say it 10 more times, but I don't, I think you get the point. This photo I took with my, not my Mavic Pro, not my 2,500 drone, with my opening price point drone. You can buy the Mavic Mini. This is not a pencil case. I know it's very tiny, but this is not a pencil case. 
I think my head is almost as big as this thing. But this is a drone that you can get for under $400. It fits in my little beach bag uh, and in my larger fanny pack. I flew this drone two months, two months after I started flying and I got this picture and it is on the cover of a Florida Tourism Board magazine. That's pretty cool, right? That's an amazing thing. And what I, my point here is that you don't have to get the crazy drones. You don't have to be this experienced crazy pilot who's flown millions of times. This was taken two months after I got my drone. That's pretty, that's pretty fun. Here's another example of working with Discover Crystal River. If you swam with manatees, please tell me in the chat. They're so, so magical. Um, I got the picture, right? Swimming with the manatee. I have the picture of me on my water bike. You can see the manatees and showing their beautiful spring. That's really, really awesome. And uh, answering a quick question in the chat, I fly, I've, my drones have so many passport stamps, not literally you can get a passport stamp. Flying through an airport and going through an airport with a drone, just like going through the airport with your laptop. What do you do that's special for that? Nothing, same thing. Your drone is just another camera. It's not some crazy thing. If you're trying to launch your drone at the airport, yeah, you're probably going to get in trouble for that in the same way that you'd get in trouble if you started smoking in the middle of an airport, right? Like common sense, but flying with a drone, totally normal. Traveling with it, totally normal. I want to kind of do a quick recap and get some nods to make sure we're doing okay. I've kind of taught you guys so far about why I think every traveler needs a drone. Some kind of insight of what you can start doing with it as a travel creator. And now I want to move into ugh, like, stop, it's not hard. Like, let's talk about how to get into it easily. Um, and then let's, let's kind of talk about what's next. All right, does that sound okay? Okay, got head nods. I love it. You guys are awesome. I'm having, I'm having so much fun. I'm really sweaty. I'm going to be totally honest. All right, there are rumors. There are rumors around drones, a lot of rumors. Uh, a lot of people think it's, it's really complicated to fly a drone. And I think some of the important things to know is, and actually one of my favorite things is having my mom fly my drone. My mom does a really amazing job flying my drone. She's 64 years old. The only time she's terrible at it is when she forgets her eyeglasses. But one of the things that surprised her the most is to launch a drone, to launch a drone, you simply just push a button. You push a button. There's, that's it. Once you push the button, if you don't already know this, you push the button and the drone will come 1.5 meters off the ground, about three feet or whatever, and it will just stay there. It will stay there until you tell it to do something else. If my boyfriend was like that, it would be amazing. You push the button and the drone will launch. If you push the button again, it will land. That is actually one of the biggest misperceptions. And I wanna share that up front because for those of you who might know, I have been flying a very difficult, very challenging drone, which is the first person view drone. It's a manual drone. This thing is not like flying a normal drone. This, you actually have to like, make sure you keep it in the air because it will 60 miles per hour dive into the ground very quickly. Regular drones are very, very easy. Chillax, you just push a button. It hovers, it will hover on its own. And the other thing is a lot of the drones now are getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. And they have things like these little thing reflectors that you see here. This is what they call obstacle avoidance. That means if you're flying and you're like, oops, I'm almost gonna land on the ocean. Whoops, boop, it, bop, it comes right back up and it will do it for you. Your drone will do a lot more for you than you think it will. Another one is a lot of people think like, oh, you need to, you need to become a pilot. You need to pass the test. You need to blah, blah, blah. Think about it this way. When you're driving a car, if you have a car driver's license and you go to Tulum, Mexico tomorrow and you rent a scooter, do you need to have a motorcycle license? I do have a motorcycle license, but the answer is it depends, but likely no. In other words, a lot of the rental places out there have a motorcycle engine of a 50cc, which means if you have a driver's license, you can operate it, no problem using your driver's license. It's when you get into the big boys, the big heart, like, you know, the big motorcycles, et cetera, with the big engines or the big scooters, then you need an M1 motorcycle license. Same thing with drones. If you fly 
the small drones, like you don't need a license. And I'm talking drones that are like 55 pounds and more. This thing is 249 grams. If I did this all day, I would not get a bicep on my left arm. Like it's super light is my point here. And so what I'm trying to say here is you actually don't need a license with the nuance of if you want to make money from your drone, you should technically get a license. If you make money, you should be a pilot. Kind of think about it this way. If you're trying to get a job somewhere, you should probably have some professional experience, right? So that's just an easy way to think about it. Ooh, starter drone coming soon, Mia. All right. I know there's a million, million rules on here. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. No, there are not a lot of rules. These are the most basic rules you need to know. So many people think like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm gonna take you through a couple of examples of rules. We'll get into a little bit more complicated, but I want you to step back. How many people here drive a car? You drive a car? How old were you when you drove a car? Maybe 16, something around that age. In my opinion, it is significantly more difficult to drive a car than it is to fly a drone, not only from an operation standpoint, but also from a rules perspective. There are three basic rules you need to know. You're not supposed to put your drone higher than 400 feet. And the reason for that is because starting at 400 feet, there becomes a lot of activity with airplanes and other stuff. In other words, do you wanna be flying right next to the Delta flight that's going to Tulum? Probably not. Right? You don't want to get in the way of big airplanes, et cetera. You want to fly a little bit lower. The other thing, you need to be able to see your drone. One of They call it VOS or visual line of sight. If you're flying your drone, you need to be able to look up and be like, there it is, and have a sense of where your drone is at. And the last one is you don't want to crash into airplanes. If you're driving your car and an emergency vehicle starts coming behind you, what do you do? You pull into the middle of the road and then like go 100 miles an hour, right? No, you pull over and you stop and you let them go by. In other words, you don't mess with the emergency vehicles around. Same thing with planes. You yield to planes. You don't get in the way of planes. And that also means you don't fly at airports. So here is, and this is going to seem complicated, but I want to break it down for you. You're looking at a drone map. But the thing about this drone map, and think about it like Google Maps, when you tap on things in Google Maps, it will tell you, right? Oh, that's, you know, that's Target, or click on something. Oh, that's, you know, JFK Airport, or click on that, like, oh, that's Starbucks. Same thing here, except it's telling you, yes, you can fly. No, you can't fly. Yes, you can fly. And they make it very easy for you. And yeah, there's all these like colors and stuff, but you're literally just tapping on the map and making sure you're going somewhere where it's not red. So let me give you an example of that. We're going to start with this last bullet point. Don't spy on the president. Do you think you can fly your drone around the White House? Probably not, right? Someone's probably going to shoot it down from the air because the president doesn't want you spying on them. In the same way that should you fly at an airport where planes are coming in and out? No, you shouldn't. The other ones are just like cars. When you get a new car, what do you do? You have to register it with the DMV. Same thing with your drone. You register your drone. The other thing, and there are nuances here, and I'll get into this, Mia, especially with your question in a minute. The other thing, can you drink and then drive your car? No, you can't drink and drive your car. Like common sense here stuff, right? So let's give a couple more examples of that. You just went to the bathroom and you just got out of the shower and you're not wearing any clothes. Do you want to see a drone outside your window? No, probably not. You probably want some privacy. You probably should not spy on your neighbors. Would you want to be in Yosemite hiking? And it's nice and it's peaceful and it's quiet and there's a deer that just went by and then there's like a bunch of rabbits and beautiful squirrels yeah you want that if you flew a drone there okay not a big deal but imagine every single person on the trail also flying a drone imagine 1000 drones in the air at the same time yosemite is a national park for a reason and they are preserving things there including your enjoyment of yosemite plus all the animals plus the nature so maybe that makes sense same thing with you know, should you fly over a prison? Probably not. You're going to help someone get out of prison. They probably don't want you flying there. Disneyland, right? Disneyland doesn't want you flying over it. They don't want you hitting one of their roller coasters and hurting somebody. And you can kind of see like, this is common sense, right? You probably shouldn't fly in those places. Um, this is another, <laughs> would you take a ladder to a ballpark so that you could watch the game for free? Probably not. Probably shouldn't put your drone over a concert or the Super Bowl and try to watch the game for free, right? They, uh, 
they don't like that. <laughs> so those are some of the basic rules. Hope everyone's still feeling a little bit chill. There's a lot of things that the app is getting smarter and smarter and smarter in teaching you. And I'll put it this way, this drone, this drone, the Mavic Mini, which I'll talk about more in a second, but the Mavic Mini is legally a toy. This is a toy drone. It is made out of plastic. And DJI did something smart in the weight of this and that they made it a toy. And again, this is less than a $400 drone. They made it a toy so that you don't actually have to register it. You don't have to treat it like a drone. This was actually geared towards kids. So if kids can fly these things, the app will probably do things to stop you from seeing the president, from doing things like flying at the airport. It will automatically land your drone. Oh, I messed up. My drone will automatically land. Chillax. If kids can fly these things, my guess is you're gonna, you're gonna be just fine. Drones are not scary. Oh, this is an important picture. Three months, three months after flying a drone, I am flying it off of a horse. I am hand launching and hand launching it, hand landing it from a horse. Do you know what happens when you launch a drone from a horse? It has something to say about it. This is not a this is not an easy flight. If I can do this right after I started flying a drone, you can too. And this was work that I did for the tourism board as well. A unique thing. They don't have a lot of drone shots of one of their top tour items being on horses. We are happy to have you come and cover this, please. So Flying a drone is not scary. You can fly off of horses as well. Okay. Um, this is me driving my car. Flying a, uh, flying a drone is easier than driving a car. We've already kind of talked about this. This is a lot of words. This is a screenshot off of my Instagram. What I did here was uh, I showed in a very funny way on Instagram, which by the way, if you're on Instagram, check out my stories today. They have some fun drone info on there. I'm at Christine Lozada everywhere. But this was what I was talking about earlier in terms of parental controls. There are settings in your drone that you can put in ahead of time so you don't accidentally do crazy things. An example, what's the first rule? Anyone remember the first rule? Don't fly higher than 400 feet. You can put a setting in your drone that says don't fly higher than 400 feet. So when it gets to 400, your drone will be like, yo, Christine, 400. And then you just simply lower it, right? Or things like, I'm scared, my, I'm gonna fly my drone too far and it's gonna lose connection with the controller and I'm gonna lose it. Set your drone, don't go further than you set the parameters. Yo, Christine, stop, you went too far. Actually, it won't even tell you, it will just stop. Your drone will just stop when it gets to that number, whatever you choose. There are settings like this, 12 of them that you can put into your drone and that's what this is talking about. And actually to answer a quick question, it doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone or an Android or what version. I fly this drone using my iPhone 11 and using this iPhone, I think like four. <laughs> this iPhone barely works. But basically you just need something that can connect to the DJI app, doesn't matter. The camera on the drone is what's taking the beautiful pictures. It doesn't matter what phone you're using to make that happen. You just need to make sure it has battery. This is my mom flying my drone. I really didn't help her. And she totally crushed it. She did an awesome job on that. Which by the way, if you wanna see that video, it's on my YouTube channel. She's, my mom's like a little munchkin. She's really, really cute. The other thing that I talk a lot about on my channel, cause so many people ask me is which drone should I get? And this is me talking to you about the three drones that I currently fly. I fly the Mavic Mini. I fly the Mavic Air 2 and I fly the new DJI FPV first person view drone. Each of these drones do totally different things. And this is the same thing. And I want you to think about this in the same way that you chose your camera. My camera is my iPhone. That's what made sense for me from a travel creator perspective based on the type of travel I have. Based on what type of traveler or travel creator you are, you might need something different. And so these are two examples of the opening price point drones. But I will also say, if you are someone who cares about quality of photos and videos, this isn't a Apple versus Android world, in my opinion. DJI has dominated the market in terms of consumer friendly, amazing quality drones. And I'm talking about for the Mavic Mini 2, you can get 4K quality on that drone, which is really, really amazing at this price point. And so 
they are also coming out with an even cheaper one. So again, when the holidays come up, September rolls around, new launches come out, but the new Mavic Mini SE will be at an even lower price point than what you see here. And so, yes, that's a really good example. You can find that bundle at Costco. I will say these drones don't often get discounted, but I would also say buying a drone secondhand is something I would consider. If you're like, oh, that's a little bit too expensive. All you need, you it doesn't matter if like the body is beaten up. Actually, this drone, because I crashed it and flew it upside down like this for a long time, there's grass underneath the hood. That does not matter. You need the props to work well and you need the camera in perfect condition. Otherwise, if the body's kind of dirty, everything else a little bit chipped, it doesn't matter. As long as it flies and as long as the camera is good, buying a secondhand drone is something I would be a total advocate of. So again, I have kind of broken down my YouTube channel of like, I have a whole playlist of which drone, where do I start? With a bunch of videos there. Beginner drones for like, okay, I got my drone now. What do I do? Going into like, oh, like, I don't want to break the law. Like, tell me about drone safety stuff. Like, oh, it's really windy outside. I am notorious for flying my drone in conditions where you should not be flying in that kind of wind because why not? Um, and then how do I improve once I'm flying? And so this is a recap of what I have available. And I also have um, a Facebook group to help answer questions and share with you guys what's going on. But I, I am going to try to leave time here to answer as many of your questions as I can that I haven't already answered. But also, um, I don't remember what I was gonna say next. But yeah, oh, DM me. If you have more questions and it's not talked about today, like I'm available. Uh, some of you know this, I, I'm sometimes behind in the DMs, but I try very, very hard uh, to keep up with it. Okay, I wanna talk actually really quickly before we jump into questions. For those of you who have your drone, so I'm, I'm curious what kind of passions you guys have in life where you're so into it. And when you see something, you're like, oh, that could have been better if, or like, oh, they did this or that wrong. I can see a drone shot and in one second, know what should have been different. And actually the, the example of um, the drone shot that I took one of your Instagram videos of and optimized it for Instagram and made it a little bit better. That was a perfect example of that. I can, I encourage you to check out that video. Um, but there are a couple kind of big buckets that I would say to everyone who currently flies a drone today, or if you're interested, don't think about it like a drone. It's a camera. It's a flying camera. In the same way that taking a picture comes with you know, like, oh, good composition. I'm not saying you have to be a pro photographer, but literally like, what do you want someone to be looking at here? Like, what do you want them to look at? And so don't forget that drones are a camera and having something that you want someone to be looking at is really important. And as they're looking at it, slow your roll, like slow it down. In other words, even with this drone that flies 60 miles an hour, I will probably never show footage of it flying 60 miles an hour. It should make you feel as sick and as gross and as nauseous as I do when I'm done flying. Like I, I take drama mean to be able to fly this thing. And you will take drama mean too if I put that footage directly onto Instagram. It should make you very sick. And so I'm not saying you guys are all flying at 60 miles an hour. I'm just saying, slow it down. It's really easy to fly drones very quickly. And that's one of the problems I see People will imagine getting into your car and when you're, the light turns green, do you push the gas all the way to the metal? Like, no, we're not driving pedals to the metal. The same thing is with your drone and the proper way to fly. And this feels like a Nintendo controller. It's tempting to do this, this. I am pinching the sticks. When I pinch the sticks, I can move the stick instead of this much. I move it this much, just a little bit. And there's really not that much movement that you need depending on what you're doing. So fly slower. The third thing I see a lot of people doing wrong and I make, I fly with a lot of other drone pilots. I love flying with people for free, which by the way, in my email newsletter, I talk about all the places in the world. I am a nonstop traveler. If you know anything about me, I'm constantly traveling. And everywhere I travel to, I give free drone workshops. You got a drone? I'll teach you how to do it. Don't got a drone? Fly my drones. Pick. I got a bunch. You can choose which one. You can fly my FPV too. Take drama me. 
All right, location scout. This is one of the biggest problems. Too many people send the drone and then look at what they're trying to fly and capture. And these drones often have 13 minute batteries, 25 minute batteries on a good day, 26, 27 minute batteries. That's not that long. Once you're kind of going around and stuff and that's, that's if there's like no wind and perfect conditions and you know life is perfect and there's rainbows in the background. Like no, it's almost never like that. Like there's stuff going on. And so location scouting and ways of getting smart around that. I have a full video on that, but my one tip, Google Maps. Google Maps in satellite. Look at it on satellite. Have the top down view already given to you from Google. So you can get a sense of what is cool in that area then go there, then fly your drone. Instead of kind of parking, sending the drone, wasting your battery, realizing, oh, the cool thing's over there, we gotta go over there, and then having to send the drone again, that's less battery than you started with. The last one I would say, especially for new pilots, let the drone do it for you. And this is the cool thing. Again, this is targeted towards kids. The drone will do so much for you. There are things called quick shots. Tell me in the comments if you fly quick shots that will, Take the picture or the video for you. It will, you're just sitting here smiling. It'll send the drone out, reveal your background, and then it comes back to you when it's done. And then you can send it off to the next easy thing. Using the drone to just let it do it for you, especially in the beginning. These are tips for in the beginning um, to get good and later. And actually, I would love for you guys to guess. Laura shared, I've only been flying my drone since January, 2020. It's only been about a year and a half. Guess how many times I have flown my drone? Guess how many times I have flown my drone? And for those of you who have drones, I'd love to see in the chat how many times you guys have flown. And just a couple quick things. And this is um, a teaser for, this is a teaser for I'm launching a course. I'm launching a course of how to fly like me and how to get cinematic shots and edit them. And super easy, just using your phone or basic apps or things like that. It doesn't need to be complicated. But a lot of things that scare people is, you know, oh my gosh, like people complain. What do I say to someone when they, you know, tell me I can't be flying here? What do I do? I will teach you how to fly stealth. I would say 90% of the time I fly my drone, the person I'm with is like, hey, uh, you, when are you going to fly your drone? And I'm like, I'm already done. I finished like 10 minutes ago. And that is a normal thing. And I can teach you how to fly in stealth mode. I fly with a lot of etiquette. There are certain things, for example, every hotel loves the drone shop. No hotel or hotel guest likes the drone around. I will share a lot of etiquette around that. So I think one thing just to take away and think about is, you know, do people want a drone here? Like, is that a desirable sound or noise? Or am I somewhere where it'll get drowned out? And no one's really going to hear it because it's not a big deal. Um, and the other thing is, has anyone guessed how many times I've flown my drone? No, I have. I And this is only uh, what's showing in my DJI app. There's a lot of times I fly other people's drone and it's not counted. But I have flown my drone 516 times. I want you to go ahead and do the math. I have been flying my drone since January 2020. I have 516 recorded flights, more than that in actuality. But I ruthlessly practice. I have a little mango tree in my boyfriend's backyard and I just fly circles around it, practicing a manual circle. And what I wanna do is in my course, share with you guys, <laughs> how do you skip over all those days of practice and just get good fast? And so that's, that's what I'm all about. Whew, okay, that's a lot of talking. This is me, this landing page, christinelazawa.com slash TNN. That has all the info that I talked to you guys about today, including the giveaway, all the other stuff. But whew, Laura, how'd I do? We got questions. How's everyone doing? Are we overwhelmed? Are we all as sweaty as I am? No. Are we excited oh, about drones? You were amazing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> sweaty and dramamine, right? Good calm though. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't know about the rest of everyone, but I have always been so hesitant to scare, to try it. I've always been scared and I feel like it's impossible, but you've just made it seem like it's so easy to do. And so I'm just so excited to go and try this. It's yes. amazing. Oh, let me share one more thing about why it's not scary. And let's think about cars. The first time you ever practiced driving a car before you got your license, where did you go to drive your car? Did you go to a freeway or the Audubon? No, 
you probably went to an empty parking lot, right? And one of the things about drones is if you go up there 150 feet, it is an endless empty parking lot. <laughs> you put your drone up there, 400 feet, the max amount, what are you gonna, what are you gonna hit? Tell me, like who's driving around up there? In other words, it's way easier to, to practice and fly a drone because you don't have to worry about all the other cars on the road and the stop signs and the stop lights and all of those things. It's just like anything, it's hard the very, very first time you do it. It only gets easier thereafter. I love it. Practice, practice, practice. We might not be every day like you, but I think we will hopefully all get there. All right, we do have a, quite a few questions. So um, a lot of them to start off are more with equipment and what do you recommend? So I know you talked a little bit about that. Um, JR had a question about, do you recommend a drone for general travel or just recommend a drone under 250 G, is that grams, I'm guessing? I'm not oh, sure. Sweet. Okay. Yep, that's totally fine. I think it's a good question. I would say it depends. And actually, let's do a literal uh, show and tell example. So I am a very, very minimalist when I travel. So this is this is the entire thing you need to fly your drone, right? This holds both the DJI Mavic Mini as well as the controller on this side. That This is a bigger drone. This is a bigger drone, not by a ton. My DJI Mavic Air 2. The Air 2S is the drone to get, in my opinion. That's my next drone. You can kind of see size-wise, right? It's not that much bigger. The actual bag that it's being held in is also not that much bigger. This is the bag for my DJI Air 2. This is my Mavic Mini. This is minimal size. I'm talking about the, I'm not the girl that carries the big purse. I'm the girl that carries the fanny pack. And so this size wise is not that big of a difference for travel. Um, I would say it ultimately comes down to the type of drone you care about. If you, there are, there are nuances that a toy drone, such as you don't have to register it, things like that, that you can get away with, which might make you want to get this drone. But I would say if ultimately you care about super high quality photos and videos and doing more advanced things than investing in the, the bigger, better drones is kind of a easy way. And I would say one way to figure out like, oh, I don't know, am I that person or am I not that person? Are you, ooh, that was loud, sorry. Are you the person that takes the iPhone photo just using the regular iPhone? Or are you the person that also uses 0.5? Or are you the person that also uses portrait? Or are you the person that also does pano on your phone? If you said yes to any of those, you will want to level up. I, after five months of flying this thing, I almost threw this thing in the trash because I was annoyed by how limiting it is in terms of advanced things that I want to do. It is fantastic for size. It's small. It's approachable. It's plastic. Like, it's just really easy to fly. But if you at all want advanced things, you might consider the second one. Okay, that, that's perfect. And I think that might answer Todd's question as well. Todd, if that didn't, just let us know. But it, his question was more around, would you start with under or over the 250? But I think you just answered that. So that's perfect. Um, Mia has a question about what's your best recommendation for a starter drone? I know you talked about the one or two series. So I think you kind of addressed that, but if you have anything else to add. I, I have something to add, and it's kind of addressing one of the other questions I saw about some of the like really inexpensive drones that you see at um, Target and Walmart. And so uh, I would say for the starter drone, if you do want to go like super starter Mavic Mini, the Mavic Mini 2, I would say the one versus the two, the two is so much more amazing than the one. Like by a long shot and it's only $50 more. I would say definitely get the Mavic Mini 2. Um, there are like really cheap drones out there and I have flown a couple of them. And, and I'm saying, when I say really cheap, I'm saying the $75 drones and stuff like that. And I would say the things to be careful about with those drones, the majority of the time people buy them so they can be like, oh, well, I just wanna practice for when I actually do get one and I wanna be good. Um, they don't fly like regular drones. And a lot of times they're so cheap and tiny that if you actually bring them outside, they will just be taken by the wind and crash really quickly. They're meant for being flown in the house. A lot of those drones at Target and Walmart are drones that are toy drones for kids to be flown in the house. Those don't fly the same as these. And let's be honest, when you're traveling, 
my guess, you're probably not going to be taking photos inside of your hotel room and your Airbnb. You want to be out there playing for real. And so these drones are so easy to fly. FPV, not easy to fly, but normal drones are so easy to fly that you may as well just, just dive straight in is my opinion, is my opinion. Okay, perfect. I think that answered quite a few of the questions. So that was awesome. Um, Amanda has a question regarding the smaller drones like the Magic Mini that are more light in weight. So are those a problem when you're in windy conditions? That's a great question. And actually I'm gonna be putting out, so I realized one of the things that might be helpful for people is I love to capture people's reactions. So I recently flew in Miami beach with someone who owns the Mavic Air 2. And I was like, oh, take my drone, like fly my mini, like try it. And he tried it and showing his reaction to it, I think is interesting. So those types of videos will be posted to my channel as well. I would say one of the things that drives me crazy about this Mavic mini smaller drone is um, it doesn't take wind well, but that's relative, right? So it depends on what kind of photography you're getting. For me, I am someone who chases beaches around the world. And so for me, I'm often in windy conditions and flying pretty high. And so your drone will tell you if it's like, yo, Christine, too windy, it will tell you. This drone will often tell me um, when I'm flying at like 100 feet. This drone never tells me that, never. And this drone, if it can fly 60 miles an hour, it can take on any wind possible. And so I would say wind is a problem, but there are ways that you can fly it when you learn the cinematics that you can get around the windiness. And also one of, I sh I'd say for those who have a drone and are, they're like, oh, I know what you're talking about with the wind. It will often compensate and the drone will go like this and fly. And so in the edit, you need to correct the horizon. That's one of the, the quick things I always see in people's footage. I'm like, well, it was windy that day. You know, correct the horizon. Uh, so it'll tilt the horizon. You just need to straighten it out. But it, it can take on wind. I flew this thing at 8,000 feet of elevation, droning myself, riding a bike in Ethiopia in January of this year in 35 miles per hour, 35 mile per hour winds. That's pretty gnarly, but that's the kind of travel I do. So if you can relate, <laughs> I hope that answers it. No, that's perfect. Okay. Um, can you just repeat real quick? What's your second drone? Did you say it was the Mavic Air 2? Yes, my, the Mavic Air 2. And um, both on my channel as well as my Instagram guide, it gives the breakdown of like what I fly, why, but what you should get. Because the Mavic Mini 2, the Mavic Air 2S, those are the starter drones that I, I would say 90% of the people who come and talk to me and ask me questions, they will fall in one of those two buckets. Yeah, the only time that someone came to me and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no you need something else is they're like, I want to map construction and see how this place is changing over the course of three months. That's a different drone. Um, you can do it with these drones, but that's a different drone. But I would say 99% of the time that people are coming to me, they fall into the bucket of Mavic Mini or Mavic Air 2. And the Mavic Mini 2, Mavic Air 2S are the ones to get. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, basically all of you should be following her anyway, but you can also reach out to Christine and all the different ways I've sent um, for if you have specific questions on what you should get personally. Um, one more question regarding, you know, the specifics around where to purchase drones and all that. So do the drones normally come with cases or where do you get the cases that go with that? That's a good question. And so actually I saw in the chat, someone had gotten the bundle um, and that's a great one. So the Mavic Mini 2 bundle, uh, which I do recommend because it will come with things like the extra batteries. If you're like, oh, 30 minutes, like 25 minutes of battery, that's fine. You're going to regret it. Like I, I have a lot of batteries. I keep three batteries for every single drone, but the Mavic Mini 2 bundle comes with the bag. And this bag, you can see it's totally beaten up and has like sand and salt all over it from being at the beach the other day. Uh, but this bag is great. It's been, um, the bags that it comes with are awesome. And if you get one that is not the bundle, which I totally support, I don't keep it fancy. This is a $13 case off of Amazon. It has been around the world with me, or it's perfectly fine. I've sat on it three times, it's perfectly fine. Um, there's also a link in my bio on Instagram that says 
vlog like me or my gear or something like that, because like it works for you, like go get it. <laughs> it doesn't have to be expensive and crazy. Like this, this is good enough. Perfect. Sounds like it's easy to find them anywhere you need. So that's awesome. All right. So we've got a couple specific questions around drone licensing and whatnot. So how do you go about getting a drone license if you want to add it to your photography business, if you already have that going on? That's a good question. Um, so there is a exam that you have to take. And so the drone pilot's license is called the part 107 license. And what's interesting about it is you are getting a pilot's license for an unmanned aerial system. So in other words, it's, it's not a drone exam. It's a pilot's exam for operating something that shares the air with airplanes. And so the types of things that are on that exam are a little bit more advanced in terms of understanding weather, traffic patterns at airports, things like that. But I will also say there are programs out there. I use the Pilot Institute. I studied for, um, I think, 10 days and I just watched videos. The book, the manual is like this thick. I didn't read a single page. That exam is, I think, 60 questions. It normally takes people over two hours. I finished in 20 minutes. I got a 95% and I uh, am shocked. In other words, um, you can study yourself. That's what the exam looks like. Uh, the Pilot Institute is fantastic. I have a link for that as well in my Instagram bio. But I would say if you're considering doing it, again, you need the pilot's license if you're trying to make money off of your drone. You can study for it. However, it makes sense for you to study. Everyone learns differently. I used, again, the Pilot Institute. Their learning course took me 10 days. And I actually didn't, I was watching their videos while I was sitting on the beach. I'm going to be totally honest here. I was sitting on the beach flying my drone, watching their videos. Um, and then you take the exam. And by taking the exam, what you do is you are driving to a local, like, I don't want to say airport facility, but basically there are exam centers all over the U.S. There's likely one within 20 to 30 minutes of wherever you live. And you have a proctor give you the exam and then you get your license thereafter. And it's good for two years before you have to renew it again. Wow. Amazing. OK, good to know. And is everyone going to go get their license? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Rory has a question in terms of oh, Rory. only using the drone for blogging purposes. Do you need to register your drone? Yes and no. So actually, here's here's some insight. And this is Christine really covering her butt. The reason why I got my drone license immediately, even before um, I was doing paid work for places, is because I put all my drone shots on YouTube. And when you put your drone shots on YouTube, and you have a YouTube channel, my travel channel is monetized, which means I make ad revenue. Technically, I'm making money from my drone. I don't think the police are gonna come after me. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's ad revenue, whatever. If your blog is making ad revenue, the chances of someone coming after you, it's kind of like, you know, I was at the grocery store last night buying wine and I didn't get carded. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I generally go to the grocery store looking like hell and no one cards me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, you can cover your butt if you're on that side of the fence from a legality issue. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's not, there are bigger fish to fly or bigger fish to fry out there for the Federal Aviation Administration. They're probably dealing with people, you know, delivering drugs with drones. That happens. They're dealing with those things. If you're putting them on your blog, I, I don't think they're really worried about you. <laughs> All right, makes sense. Uh, let's see. So Tess has a question in terms of, is there a way to buy the warranty or insure it after purchasing it? Looks like there, with, if you do the DGI, there's a 24 hour limit after you purchase it um, to buy the warranty. So if you miss that, what could you do? That's, oh, that's a really good question. So actually I have a, I have a couple of answers to that. Um, so I will say with full transparency, because I'm a believer and drones are easy to fly, I never got insurance on these drones. I never got the DJI refresh package, nothing like that. And if you're unfamiliar with what that is, basically you can get um, insurance through DJI so that if you crash and burn your drone, you can send it in and for a very inexpensive amount, they will send you back a fixed or a new one. 
uh, pretty quickly, actually, which is amazing. And I did. I got that for this drone because if you don't know what an FPV drone is, most drones are flown like this. This drone flies like this through things under things and at 60 miles an hour. If I don't crash this drone, I'm not trying hard enough. So this drone I did ensure because I guaranteed I'm going to crash it. Um, the other thing that you can do is actually for those who are interested in um, being a travel creator and selling their drone stuff, you for single day jobs, you can get insurance for a single day. Um, there are tons of companies. I mean, think about how many people fly drones. There are lots of insurance companies happy to take your money um, if you want to buy into longer term plans or single day plans. Wow, amazing. Just so much. You have so much knowledge around all of this. It's Well, kind of think about it like travel insurance, right? Some people get travel insurance for their whole year for all their trips and some people will go get it for a single trip, right? Same, same sure. thing. Yeah, exactly. It's a good perspective. Good way to think about it. Yeah. All. It makes it easier to remember, I guess you could say. All right, so Denise has a question. Um, so she wants to shoot large scale outdoor science experiments for kids learning. So if you were to crash the drone, how durable might it be? Is there one that's more durable than the other if you're gonna be using it or have kids using it, I guess you could say. That's a good question. I have two answers to that. One is um, you have an option. So I'd say two things. You have an option to buy prop guards. Prop guards are guards for your propeller. And imagine how many people here you just training wheels. How many people here go bowling and put bumpers on the sides? I like to do that, especially when I'm drinking a lot. Same thing. There, imagine these things that go over the props so that if you crash this into something, uh, it will just kind of fall over, right? And it won't, it won't break the propellers. Obviously, so there are three speeds. There are three speeds, if you didn't know this, for drones. There's basically slow, medium, and spicy fast. And if you just keep it in the slowest setting, it's not actually going that fast. Um, and I'm not saying these are bumper cars by any means, but it would be challenging. And I mean, I mean, obviously you could accidentally crash your drone into a huge bonfire and that's a different story. But if you kind of like hit this against a fence with prop guards on it, going at the slowest speed, not a whole lot's gonna happen. Obviously, if you hit the fence and the fence is 1 million feet high, you get my point. It's going to fall down a very long ways. That's a different story. So it's hard for me to answer, but you can fly slow, keep it in the slowest setting. You can also get propeller guards. They're kind of like training wheels and that will help you as well. Okay, awesome. Okay, so maybe now another show and tell one. So Jason had a question about using your phone as a controller. So does the phone actually- Jason, I'm ready. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I saw that question. I was like, let me attach it. Yeah, and it, does it attach to the controller? Or just can you yeah. that? Yeah. So that's actually something a lot of people have a misperception about. They don't realize that the only things that you need to fly a drone is the actual drone, the controller, and your phone. And that's it. That's all you need to be able to fly it. And actually, to be honest, and I'll tell you in a second, you don't even need your phone. Um, so I'll share that in a second. But all you're doing is you're connecting your phone to the controller. This is the Mavic Mini 1 controller. And there's a little um, cord on the side that plugs into your phone. And then you're just opening the app and that's it. And the app will do everything for you in terms of helping you to take your photos and videos, give you all your safety and warning, allow you to push the button to take off and land. Um, but this is what the setup looks like. For those of you who are newer pilots, one of the big mistakes I see is people flying with it like this. You actually want your drone to be here so depending on how you're flying, you know, if you're laying down on the ground and looking up, then yeah, you probably want it like this. But otherwise, if you're just standing there like normal people, you probably want your controllers with the antennas up like this while you're flying. And again, pinch, 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 don't Nintendo style. So pinch the sticks. Um, and then if you don't have your phone, and here's another cool thing, you don't need your phone, but you also don't need your phone to have service. I did, I was in somewhere crazy in Ethiopia when I was flying my drone with no service and it was on airplane mode and you can fly your drone just fine. You just wanna make sure you have your drone updated with all the software and firmware before you head out there. So you don't have to worry about that. But I can fly my drone without the phone attached to it. Uh, my drone's off right now, but pretend it's on. If you simply press this down together, it will start the engine, it will start the propellers and you can simply start flying. 
Um, and that's another way. I would say the danger of that is you can't see through what the camera is looking at anymore. And it's really important to keep the drone in sight. Uh, but it's a really great way um, to practice flying a drone. And especially if your phone runs out of batteries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, couple more questions. So both Todd and Christine, and I was actually curious about this too. So is there an easy link or summer where we can find out about licensing and permissions in the different countries that we're traveling to? You know, a lot of people ask me and I say, think about the pandemic, right? During the pandemic, if you're traveling, was there a single source that told you about every single country, city and state's unique laws or rules they had in place to be able to travel there. Unfortunately, not really. There are a lot of blogs out there that try to do a good job of that, but I wouldn't say there's a single source. Um, I would say in general, I'm always using the DJI app. There are other flight map apps that I use to look at rules and regulations, but in the same way that you know, when I wanted to go travel through Tanzania, or even I'm headed back to Mexico tomorrow, I'm just Googling what's the latest and greatest. Because also the other thing about drones, it's just like the pandemic, soon as one thing is put in place, things change so fast. Things change really quickly around laws and things like that. Um, and so I'm just, I usually do individual places homework. Um, and one thing I put on my channel, because so many people ask about the places I'm flying at, um, is I try to share info about how to fly there and where to fly there. Uh, like literally where I flew um, and giving coordinates and things like that. So, yeah. That's perfect. And I bet as more and more people start flying, there might be more communities that can share information like that, as you mentioned. So, um, yeah. But I mean, even now, like more apps are coming out. I mean, it's, it's in everybody's interest to help people to be safe with these things, right? Kind of in the same way it's in the world's interest to help us all travel more safely because we all want to get out there. We all want to fly our drones. No one wants to break the rules purposely, you know what I mean? Um, but it's hard to find a single source. Yeah, I love that. Be, be safe about it and be smart, what you were talking about before about where you're actually flying and then what you're flying over. So <laughs> good advice. All right, Kate, we have two more questions. Uh, Kate's curious, what was your scariest drone experience? Um, you know, was it kind of the physical or weather danger and, you know, or did you have any instances with the authorities? No, never. I'm just kidding. Of course, I've had crazy things happen with my drone uh, and I still fly every day. Um, I put out a video about kind of like some of the dumbest things I've done with my drone. Something as simple as like, oops, forgot to put the SD card in there. Now you can't take a single photo or oops, forgot that one cord and now I'm in the spot to take the photo and video and I can't fly my drone. Um, I would say one of the top things that I see other people making the same mistake on, and this is my scary moment, is not giving yourself enough juice, not giving yourself enough juice and battery to be able to fly back and land where you're at. In other words, um, there was a moment, and actually you guys saw my manatee photos and videos. I love, oh, I love manatees. Um, but I had a moment in which I was flying my drone. I saw something really cool. My drone was yelling at me, land now, um, bring your drone back to you. And I was like, no, I'm gonna keep looking at this thing. I'm gonna keep taking this photo and video. Um, and my drone was out of batteries. I was on a water bike. Does anyone know what a water bike is? Imagine a kayak, but you pedal with your feet. I'm on a water bike, so this is a complicated landing. There are like 15 manatees around me. And simultaneously, the person I'm with, my boyfriend, Meatball, he's um, having an issue with one of the manatees and he's my help. Uh, and I am in this moment where my drone is landing um, because it's out of batteries and the manatees are, and the, my Meatball is, you know, oh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And so, my learning here is give yourself time to land, especially when you're in complicated situations like that. Um, a lot of people use the rule, I always break this rule, a third to go out, a third of your battery to fly out to where you're going on location, a third to take your photos and videos, and a third to come home. That is very conservative. Um, but the more you get to know your drone, keep it at that at the very beginning, but the more you get to know, push those boundaries. This drone, 
I had like 10 seconds left of battery yesterday when I was flying and I was like, I'll just fly it near me until it just lands because then I can go grab it. Uh, you'll, you'll learn things in time, but um, I, it probably doesn't seem that scary, but I have millions of stories that I could keep going with, but you know. I'm sure you do. We just don't have to follow you because I'm sure <laughs> And I love most it. Important, most important though, is, is that I still fly every day. Like I have never done something with my drone where I'm just like, oh, like, ah, I can't get back out there. Like there's no way I'd do it ever again. If anything, I'm like, let's buy another drone. <laughs> exactly. You just keep doing it. I love it. You're so passionate about it. All right. We are going to end with the last question, which is, can you tell us more about how to enter to win your drone again? Because I know a lot of us. Oh, yeah. Win that. So normally I was just, I was like, oh, I'll just throw an application up there. Um, you know, like you just fill out your name, whatever. But I'm like, no, like I actually want to give my drone to someone who will, it's my baby. Like, this is my baby. Like, I want you to take this thing and I want you to fly it. Like, I wanted you to get out there and explore the world with this and share it with people. Um, and really that's just the premise. And so I guess I call it a contest, but really I'm trying to just weed out the people who are like, oh yeah, a drone's cool. I'd love to, I'd love to win that and then sell it. Or like, oh, I'd love a you know, fancy paperweight. Or like, oh, I'd like to try that. Like, I'm just trying to find someone that can really like, oh, I, I, I want to do this. I want to try it. Um, and I'm willing to try it. And so really the, the questions that I ask are just thing, very simple things like, what's your name? Where are you located? Uh, what's something badass that you did in your life? Uh, in a hundred words or less, and then send me a quick video, like a one minute video. It was just like, why do you want my drone? I'm like, why should you win? That's it. Um, and that's all it is. And the contest is open for the entire month of August. I already have a placeholder weekend that I'm planning to fly to wherever the heck you are in the world. It does not need to be in the United States. I mean, obviously, if you're someone that's in uh, somewhere where drones are banned, uh, Barbados, Barbados does not allow drones. Um, then things get complicated. I have a whole FAQ on my landing page for it that you can look through. But basically, I will come to you wherever you are. Just teach you. It'll be fun. I love it. I was saying we need to pick a place and then enter your contest and book a trip there. And you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Christine, this is this was incredible. I you are so knowledgeable and just so passionate about this, and I. I know for me, it just makes me want to go out there, buy one and just start practicing because you make it seem so easy. Your photography, your videos is incredible for if you haven't been following her yet, please go do so because it's amazing what you're able to capture and, and just seeing it from those different perspectives. So thank you for motivating and inspiring all of us today. It's It's been incredible. Thank you so much for having me. And I, oh my gosh, you guys, thank you so much for being here with me today. And I see so many familiar faces and names in the chat. It was fantastic to be here. I, oh, I love drones. If you have more questions that weren't answered today or something comes up later, slip into my DMs. You know, I'm happy to help. Awesome. And Chris, you just have like this energetic, awesome personality. So if anyone just needs to wake up in a good mood, watch your videos. <laughs> it makes you happy. So go follow her. And then I am, I know we're a little bit past the hour, so I'm just going to go quickly because I know a lot of you are um, familiar with uh, what I'm going to talk about, but we have a couple events coming up. You can always go to the link on and see our calendar events. But on the third, we have a presentation on what it's like to travel the world as a black person. We have on the 10th, your next free trip, how to explore America's parks and public lands. And then on the 12th, um, Steve's gonna be back talking to us about how to plan travel in a time of uncertainty, which we know is crazy right now. Uh, we do, as I mentioned, we have these book clubs every month. So this next one, I think is really exciting on August 4th. This is with Scott from Scott's Cheap Flight. So I'm sure many of you follow him. And um, if you haven't read the book, Take More Vacations, go grab it. Um, if not, just come join the book club. And this is, like I said, just an intimate way to get to know the author and ask him your questions. And then if you aren't a, a member yet, feel free to click on that link to sign up really for just a few dollars a month. You can join the Nomadic Nat Plus membership program. We have all these wonderful perks. You get replays such as this, which 
I feel like I need to go back and watch because there was so much knowledge given to this. Um, so you have all of that from all the events we've had. We've just started monthly giveaways. So you can win something free. And there's live Q and A's with Nomadic Matt and then an exclusive Facebook group. So just tons of wonderful perks. So definitely feel free to join that if you're so inclined. It's just a great way to get back to this group. I feel that has given us so much over the past couple of years. Uh, and that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. You've all had amazing questions. I feel like we've learned from a lot of you and Christine, we've learned so much from you. So thank you for being here and sharing all of your amazing insight and wisdom with us. And thank you. Can you yeah. guess what I'm going to go do right now? You're going to go drone. Why? I got to practice. <laughs> yeah, I would love to do a recap afterwards and find out how many of us went to buy drones and, and practice after this, you know, so I know I for one I'm going to. So thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. And we will hopefully see you at another event real soon.